Hi everybody, welcome back to the Super Duty build. Now it's been a little while since I've put out a video because it's been a little while since I've been in a hangar working on the airplane. This is a time of year where I sort of transition from airplanes to trains. Now I don't do this every year, but some years I like to set up a big Christmas train layout with a whole village and everything under the Christmas tree. And since my family was coming up this last weekend to celebrate Thanksgiving, since I work on Thanksgiving, I wanted to have the train layout done by the time they were here so that my nieces could see the trains. And so I've started, the last couple months, I've started just kind of on and off on my spare time working on this train layout. It's eight feet by 12 feet. There's four trains on it. And uh, it's a lot of fun to build and the kids enjoy it, but that's something that's kept me a little bit busy for the last month or so. Now, speaking of trains, for the first time ever, I've actually got to see one of these real yard trains. I don't know what you call them, but so the guy I met that's also into model trains uh, has this train in his yard and it's, I don't know what scale it is, but maybe quarter scale, but it was really neat. Uh, I sat on the back and he drove me around his yard where he laid, you know, a couple hundred feet of track. Uh, and that was just pretty cool. I've seen these on YouTube before, but I've never seen one in real life. These trains are very, very expensive. This particular engine, he said, runs on a gas engine, but it, that engine, I guess, turns hydraulic motors uh, that actually drive the train. So if you like trains, you might find that a little bit interesting. Now, one of the other things I've been a little bit busy with is I was finally able to get my hands on a brand new TW200 motorcycle. I've been wanting one of these for a while, but they're very, very difficult to find because they're very sought after. And as soon as a dealer gets one in, it's sold. So I actually had a deposit on one for a little while and I was finally able to pick one up. Now, what's cool about this motorcycle is it's only 200 cc's. So it's not a fast motorcycle. It won't go on the highway. The top speed on this bike is about 70, maybe 75 if you have a tailwind. <laughs> but as you can see, it's got big, huge knobby tires. It's made for on-road and off-road use. It's completely street legal. You know, it's got turn signals and everything. Uh, one of the things I did was I put this rack on the back because I want to be able to put a cooler of food on here and just be gone all day exploring. I put on a uh, holder here for my cell phone so that I could have uh, the, the like Google Maps on there so I don't get lost. And then to power my phone, I got one of these. Uh, it's just a, uh, just a power thing. It gets wired to the battery. It's got a fuse in it. And then it goes up to, it's got a USB port so I can plug my phone into it because obviously riding around all day with the, the phone on here, it would die. So anyway, I got to install this. That's why the bike is in the hangar. But anyway, it's, uh, I guess another one of my hobbies is the motorcycles. I just like to go out on this thing and cruise around the backcountry roads and just explore the area. You also might notice that I moved the cruiser over to that side of the hangar and I brought the pits over to this side of the hangar, which is closer to my workshop area. And the reason I did that is because I really, really need to get to work on this thing. I literally have not even touched this airplane other than to move it uh, since the last video talking about the Magneto. So I've got to finish up what I'm doing on the front there with that Magneto and get this airplane back in the air. It probably won't fly until summer, but I'd like to have it ready to go. All right, with that little update out of the way, let me show you what I have been working on in the airplane. I think the first thing I'm going to do today is install the rear jump seat shoulder harness attach point, which is this right here that I finally painted black. Now, before I, wanna, before I install this, I wanna show you or talk to you about this piece that I made that goes on behind here. So it actually goes on like this. And let me show you why I made this piece here. If we look at this little drawing right here, this is looking at the airplanes from the very front. So this is the side or top long, longer on. This is the side skin and the top skin. And this piece right here is the shoulder harness attach point. And it gets riveted through here and through here. And you can see there's a big space right here between the skin and the shoulder harness attach point. And if we put a rivet 
through here like this and then rivet it, it's going to pull, it's going to look like this. It's basically going to pull the side skin in like this. And this is your rivet right here, like that. That's what it'll look like. So what I wanted to do is I wanted a spacer in here, the same thickness as the longer on, or the longer on, I never know how to say that word. Because now when you pull that rivet, it keeps the side skin straight because there's no space in here uh, for these to squeeze together. And so that's what this is here. This is my little spacer that's the same thickness as that longer on. And like I said, it goes on the back here. And now when I rivet it together, it's all solid and it won't pull that skin in. So it's time to install this piece. One more thing about this piece too. You'll notice I've pre-installed a bolt in here. And the reason why I've installed that bolt now is because if we look at this, if let's pretend like this is on the side of the fuselage, look at where that bolt is. If you put, if you don't put the bolt in now, you'll never get it in this way. If you put the bolt in this way, I think by the time you have the bolt and the nut on there, it's going to be, that bolt will come and poke on your skin. So I have the bolt going that way. And you can see there's only about a 16th of an inch gap between the bolt and what would be the side skin. So anyway, I got the bolt pre-installed on here and I'll put in my spacer and then the attach point. Well, now that this is installed, if I did not have that spacer right along this line below the rivets, which is where this longer on ends, you would see the skin sort of pulled in, kind of like you do here, because there's a big bulkhead right here that sits the same way. In fact, you can see because it pulls it in here, I don't know if you can tell, but right here is a little uh, bulge in the skin. And what I'm probably going to do is drill a hole and put a rivet right here to kind of hold that in, just like that. But you can see this is perfect here. It's not being pulled in at all because I have a spacer that's the same thickness as the long run. So anyway, that is done. Now, as you guys know, I've started kind of running some wire and I'm working on wiring the panel. One of the things I've learned though, or realized, is that I really need to finish up the face of this panel, which means getting it painted and having it uh, labeled by uh, aircraft specialty. And the reason, one of the reasons why is because things like this, the elevator trim and the indicator, this gets wired to this wire or this cable, which comes from the very back to the trim motor. So if this was all connected together, I really can't remove these now to, uh, to finish the panel. So I need to have the panel sort of finished first and the other thing I want to work on is, you can see over here, all the circuit breakers go here and here. And I'd like to have those installed because I want to actually take the panel out and run all the wire from the, the switches to the circuit breakers, or actually from the circuit breakers to the switches, to be more accurate, I guess. Uh, and I'd like to do that with the panel out because I want to run them very neatly and have all the, the wires tied together. And it's gonna be a lot easier to do with the panel removed. So I have ordered and received most of my circuit breakers. There's a couple I didn't order yet. And I, I got two bus bars from Steinair. So I can, uh, if you don't know, basically it basically just goes to, like this. You drill some evenly spaced holes in here and you bolt it to the top and that's your well, I guess what I'll call the main bus. I also bought this grounding block from Steinair. You can see it's got a lot of tabs here to connect all of the grounds to, and it's got this big lug on here, which is basically just a, a brass bolt. And what you do is this will go on the inside of the firewall, and then this bolt here sticks through the firewall. So now we're on the the engine side of the firewall and then you'll put your ground on here your your engine ground and it just kind of grounds everything together at one point 
And then, like I said, you put all your other avionics grounds and light grounds and everything onto here. So it works really nice. I have one in my cruiser that's about half this size, but I wanted to get a bigger one because I have a lot more avionics and lights in the Super Duty. So I think I'm going to wind up needing more ground tabs and this should be plenty. So I still just have to find a spot on the firewall to mount that. One of the other things I'm working on is the back of the airplane. And if you saw the last video, I made a little fairing for the tip of the dorsal fin. Uh, my next step back here is to trim off this part right here and I'll drill a hole and um, rivet it here. Once that's done, Oh, and once I also have this top piece on here, that's kind of the extension of the dorsal fin, I'll make a fairing that goes all the way around here to close off this gap. So that's coming up. And then my dad was just in town, so he helped me put the elevator on. And with the elevator on now, I can uh, go ahead and make these elevator cables that go on the top and bottom, get those routed through the fuselage. I did have the rudder on also, which Kind of looked kind of cool because the whole back of the airplane looked like it was done. But one of the things I noticed is this edge right here, the very back of this lower rudder mount is actually rubbing on the rudder. So I need to just file this down just a little bit. That's quick and easy to do, but I want to do that before I put the rudder back on. But I think for now, I'm going to remove all of the instruments from the panel. I'm going to remove the panel faceplate the main panel, which is what you see here. I'm gonna mount all of the switches and circuit breakers and get that little wiring harness made. Then I'm gonna paint the panel. I was thinking about getting the panel powder coated, either this kind of semi-gloss or satin black or gray. But I think I've decided that I would like to have the panel and then the center console top pieces. I'd like to have all of that green to match the interior of the airplane. Same with these the side panels here. So instead of having it powder coated, I think I'll just, uh, once it's ready, I'll get it painted green. Then I'll ship it off to Aircraft Specialty and they will uh, silk screen on all of the labels for the switches and circuit breakers. Well, I did remove the panel and I started mounting the switches and the circuit breakers. So I guess I can show you starting from this end here. Now I am missing a couple circuit breakers because I miscalculated on how many I, I needed. So I need to get a couple more here to finish it. But I have my bus bar here. Then I have two rows of circuit breakers here. So you can see I've made a, a little uh, copper uh, splice joint here to connect the two together. And then I have this wire just connecting these. And then this is just for the flaps, I think that is. Um, so that just gets power from here. And then of course the flaps will connect to this side. So these are hooked up to the bus bar and then I'll probably have the power come in and, and bolt it right here. And then of course that powers all of those breakers. And then from there, I'm kind of starting to build a little harness that goes over to the switches. In my mind, I was thinking this would stay nice and straight kind of like this, <laughs> but nothing ever works out how I want. But I think once the, this radio and the EFA screen is in there, it'll kind of hold it where I want it. But anyway, I'm trying to do it nice and neat so I can bundle these together and then they just come up to the switches here. So anyway, this was a lot easier to do outside of the airplane. I'm glad I took the panel off to do this. And then what I'll do is I can take all of the switches and circuit breakers I'll just you know unscrew them and then since they're all kind of wired together i'll just lift everything out of here as one big harness and then i can i can finish the panel and paint it and have it labeled and then just kind of put these back in and put the nuts on and that will be done and ready to go once it goes back in the airplane i can you know finish putting in all the the other avionics looking at the front of the panel i did make a few changes this is going to be the master switch here you know, if you remember the master switch I used to have on the center console. So I've moved this, the master switch up here and I'm going to, this is not the right switch because this is just on and off. I've changed how I want to do this. I want to have a three position switch like this one shown here. And so when I go up to the middle, that'll be just a battery. 
and then when I go to the top, that's the battery and the alternator. So I've moved that to the, the upper panel here. Then I have all the lights. Um, the, oh, the wigwag here. This is for the, the, the two lights on the leading edge, the recognition lights, I call them. So if the switch is down, they're both on. And then if I go up, that will be the wigwag. Then I have landing light, pitot heat, autopilot servos, and my fuel pump will be here. Then I have all the circuit breakers in that same order. But over here is what I wanted to show you. I had these two holes drilled here for cabin heat, which is just a push-pull, kind of like your parking brake. And I had another one here for a defroster. And um, I've kind of regretted doing this for the defroster because I'm thinking I don't really need a separate push-pull for the defroster. What I'll do is on the little box that's going to come into the firewall for the cabin heat, I'll just tap off of that when I have the cabin heat on and that'll go up for a little defroster on the front window. But luckily, with all these holes for circuit breakers, I needed one more. I, I, could, I have everything in here. Like I said, these all go in the order of the switches here. And then I have, you know, the two EFA screens, the GPS, and then the, the transponder com and trim. But I needed a circuit breaker for the flaps. So what I did was I just drilled this hole out a little bit and I put my circuit breaker for the flaps here. And then this takes the place. I won't have the, the push pull here for the uh, defroster. So that worked out kind of nice. One thing I might do is I might drill two more holes here for additional circuit breakers if I need them in the future. And then if I don't need them, I can just put those circuit breaker caps on here. So I don't know, I may just leave it like this or I may drill two more holes, but at least anyway, I just wanted to show you there. I gave up my hole for the defroster and I put my flap circuit breaker there. So it's actually looking pretty good. One thing you'll notice is I do not have a circuit breaker for the USB ports that I have in the airplane. So what I'm going to do is I have a bag of these inline fuses and I'm just gonna use this for the USBs because if it ever blows a fuse and I can't use it in flight, it's no big deal, it's just a, a USB port. Um, so anyway, yeah, I don't need a circuit breaker on the panel for that, I will just use an inline fuse. All right guys, now I'm gonna take a minute and post my disclaimer. Okay, the reason I make these videos is for me to document the building process of my airplanes. And if in that process I can offer you guys a tip or a trick that I've learned along the way, then that's awesome. Hopefully it helps you guys too. Anything I show in, this, in my videos, you guys are absolutely free to go ahead and copy if you want. You know, like the little fairing I made it for the tip of the dorsal fin on the Super Duty. If you guys wanna make something like that too, go ahead and do it. If you wanna make a fairing for the back of your cruiser like I did, I would encourage you guys to play with some fiberglass and make a fairing. Same with like the fuel caps or the, the fuel senders. If you wanna mount them on the top of the tank and then make a little blister like I did, I hope you guys will do that. If I didn't want you to copy something, I just wouldn't show it in a video. But now my disclaimer is, I want you guys to be careful just blindly doing something that I'm doing without understanding why you're doing it. And a perfect example is, I realized last night that I didn't include one of the circuit breakers that I'm going to need in my panel. And let me show you what I'm talking about. In this sample wiring diagram, this is the start switch here, and you can see they have a circuit breaker from the, the main bus here to the start switch. Well, I'm using the aircraft spruce start switch, which should be familiar to just about everyone. It's got the start and the left and right magnetos. And I realized last night that I didn't uh, install a circuit breaker for that. I forgot all about it. <laughs> So, and if you remember just earlier in the video, I said I was gonna drill two more holes here just in case I needed any extra circuit breakers. Well, I've drilled those holes because now one of them will have a small circuit breaker for that start switch. And what I've been doing for this panel is I, everybody has on there, if you have a PC, Microsoft Paint. And this is the uh, template I got from Steve at Aircraft Specialty when he cut out my panel. And I just put that photo in Microsoft Paint and I'm able to, to label switches and circuit breakers and things like that. And this revision right here is about the sixth or seventh one that I've done, just making some small changes. In fact, you can see since I've printed this out, I've changed this. I wanna swap these two around. 
And the reason I'm doing that is because if you'll notice the autopilot servos is a second switch in and I wanted this autopilot servos breaker to be the second switch in or the second breaker in. So my point is I've already made quite a few changes to this and there's no telling what other changes I might make. I might notice tomorrow after this video is posted that I made a mistake somewhere. So I just want you guys to understand, don't just look at this video and blindly copy what I'm doing because things may change. All right, everybody, I hope this video was helpful in some way to you. Thank you for watching. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Make sure you subscribe uh, if you haven't yet. Give the video a thumbs up if you don't mind. It does help me out. And since I now need to order a few more circuit breakers, I'm going to put this on hold for a few days. And I think today I'm going to get back to work on the back end of the airplane.